Hey guys, it's Jenny C. Welcome back to my channel. Today we are here at the Frost Science Museum, which is a general science museum located in Miami, Florida. It has a bunch of things like marine life, as you can see right here. Also just historical figures that brought a lot to science. They also have some super cool things about space, some facts here about dark matter, and just a lot of historical artifacts and evidence and all of that. Here are some jellyfish, which I got to see for the first time ever. And this is a projector that runs along the wall that has a bunch of marine life. This is my favorite part, the big tank. You can see the sharks, the stingrays, the fishes, they're all there. And you can get the amazing view from the top, which you'll see later. This is the flying part, kind of space and planes combined. And they also have some dinosaurs there. This is a space part at an international space station simulation and it's so cool. It spins and it feels like you're literally turning around. This is a model of the International Space Station and here are some of the controls. It kind of shows you how you need to conserve energy, food, water, all that. It's really interesting. This is a planetarium where I'm going to show you a little bit of the show. Look at that. What does that look like? So, it's basically just a bunch of dust bunnies in a plastic bag, right? Why are we doing this? Why are astronauts all the way up in space putting a bunch of dust bunnies in a plastic bag? What's the point? Well, what we're trying to study with these little dust bunnies in a plastic bag is how this dust starts to form larger and larger objects in a zero-gravity environment. Huge clouds of gas and dust and ice and all kinds of other particles just in these big, big clouds. And what ends up happening inside of these nebula is over time, some of that globbing happens, that particle agglomeration. So static electricity will pull some dust particles together. And over time, they start to make bigger and bigger dust bunnies, basically. And sometimes they get so big that we call them planetesimals. Now stars are pretty, pretty big. And what that means is they have a lot of gravity. And so a star will often create a protoplanetary disk of stuff that's orbiting around it. If we were to take a look at one of our planet neighbors, I'm thinking of one that's red. Can you guys guess? Mars. <laughs> Mars is exactly correct. So we're going to fly all the way over to Mars. Do you guys notice anything different? Water, yeah. So this Mars, way back when, used to actually have liquid water on its surface. Now what happened? Where did it go? Why did it not stay there? Well, the answer is our sun. Our sun tends to do this thing where it throws off a lot of radiation, solar radiation out into our solar system. And these things, they are harsh. They're like a really strong wind. From space, we go back down to the ocean. Here are some marine life facts about turtles and their shells, which I found very intriguing since I did not know there were so many different ones. Here are some pictures that I found captivating. Fish is all around, even puffer fish. The lobster was such a cool thing to see because I've never really seen lobster before. And my favorite part, the seahorses. I have never seen them in real life and they are adorable the way they wrap around the little leaves. 
Here was a hammerhead shark, which was incredible to see. Everyone was lining up to see it. Here are the elevators in the Frost Science Museum. And this is a gravity chair where you basically lift your own weight. And on every planet, it gets increasingly more difficult because you're carrying a bigger percentage of your body weight. Now we go to the outdoors, which this view is hard to beat. I mean, you cannot tell me that this is not one of the most amazing views you've seen. This is a tank from the outside. And there's a lot of different tanks here with fishes inside. There's also birds. Even a baby crocodile or alligator, I'm not sure which one. The view is truly beautiful and I cannot get over it. Here are some stingrays which we are allowed to touch but I got a little intimidated and decided to back out. <laughs> This is us going to the last floor, which is completely outdoors with no roof. Thank you so much for watching and consider subscribing. Bye guys!